much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are thrilled that you're here in partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping us to cover the earth with the word. And I was reading a testimony from Kimberly um, about her granddaughter after receiving prayer, her granddaughter got a free car that's been a tremendous blessing in her life. And so I want to encourage you, if you have needs in your life, you might need a car, maybe you need some uh, physical healing in your body, you might be struggling with some relationships or some issues with your finances, please hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And I want to minister this verse to you. It's Colossians 1.9. And it says this is really important, that God would fill you with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding. And there's an individual watching and you're struggling on a decision that you've got to make and you're struggling with knowing God's will. And God is encouraging you with this verse that he is filling you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So trust God. He's helping you. He's bringing you through and he's filling you with wisdom. So mom, we have a really cool person today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have no prejudice. No, you know, right. Because you are our guest today <laughs> and you have a wonderful book, Hey God, Can We Talk? You know, folks, to relate to the Lord is really important, isn't it? And to be comfortable in that relationship. So I want to encourage you to get the book or books and, you know, pass them around. You know, you, you give people candy, you make them fat. You know, you give them flowers, they wilt, but give them something that lasts. And you say, is that that good a book? Oh, put my hand on my heart. This is the best book. You will love it, love it, love it. Together, we are impacting thousands of lives with the truth, compassion, and power of God's Word. But there is still much more to be done. By becoming a partner with Marilyn Hickey Ministries, you'll share in bringing God's miracles and healing to the sick, experiencing a deep love for the Bible, and taking the gospel to the nations. When you become a $30 a month partner with Marilyn and Sarah, we'll send you our welcome gift package, which includes the Jehovah Rapha Oil Vial with Oil Prayed Over by Marilyn and Sarah, our exclusive partner CD set, which includes six CDs featuring 12 never-before-released teachings, the Majesty Coffee Table Book featuring beautiful representations of the names of God, and more. If you have a passion to reach the lost and are ready to release the anointing of God into your life, then join us today by becoming a partner. Call or click today and help Marilyn and Sarah cover the earth with the word. Hey there, I'm so very happy to get this time with you today. In fact, I've been praying and anticipating this time with you for several months now. And really what God has put in my heart for you today seriously is massively encouraging. And here's the deal. This message that God has for you today isn't just like, well, you know, kind of a one-off or not a big deal. This message relates to every single person. Because here's what we're going to be talking about today. Have you ever really, really screwed up, like really messed up? You made a bad decision or you did, even on purpose, you're like, Ugh, and then you feel awful. You feel horrible for making such a bad decision and, or doing something that you know you shouldn't have done. Ugh, and just it sinks and weighs on your heart. We've all had those experiences. And some of us, our conscious is just so active and like, what do we do? What do we do when we royally screw up? And, you know, as humans, it's difficult. It's challenging because we have our relationships and, and that affects when we mess up. It affects sometimes our relationships, be that family members or friendships can affect our job or, or sometimes the schooling things we do. And, and all of us, we have royally screwed up. And if you're watching right now and you're really struggling with that, you're like, man, I... <laughs> <laughs> ugh. And, it, and, and now suddenly it's all coming to light and everybody's finding out and you're like, ugh, and it's just horrible. And you're like, I just can't see a way to get through this. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray that God would help and comfort your soul. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And when you do as well, I want to encourage you to grab my book called, Hey God, Can We Talk? This is a really powerful book on what kind of a conversation, what do we have in terms of talking with God when we 
royally screw up. And if you know somebody that's like royally messed up, just hop on the phone, get on the website and grab this copy. I'm serious, I'm serious. I'm so excited about this book. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am because I know God put this in my heart over the course of about a year on, on conversations we can have with God at very critical times in our life, very essential times. And when you think about it, and the royally screwing up. Who royally screwed up in the Bible? Well, <laughs> the Bible's full of people who messed up. But I think it's really important for us to think, what, God, what does God say to us? What's the conversation? What's the dialogue when we mess up? You know, when my kids mess up, what's the dialogue I have with them? Uh, what is the dialogue God, our Father, has with us when we royally screw up? And the perfect place to see an example of this conversation <laughs> is with Adam and Eve. Because here's the thing. Humanity screws up. It just goes with, I think, being human. Nobody's perfect. We've all heard that. And just because you messed up, you're like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's true, true to form. I'm not perfect. But what do we do? What's the, di what's the dialogue? What's the conversation like with God when we royally screw up? And so I want to I take you back to Genesis chapters 2, chapter 3. Um, this is where Adam and Eve, they totally lost the plot. <laughs> they screwed up and messed up in a major way. If you think about it, God made, and I love what God does because you read about all the stuff that God makes, you know, the creation, seven days, six, on six days, seven days, he rests. And on the sixth day, God makes Adam. And uh, I find it really fascinating to just kind of think about this. The first day that Adam is on the planet is God's day of rest. I think that's really powerful for you to think about that. Because God isn't busy doing stuff and working and achieving on Adam's first day. In fact, maybe by divine design, God designed all of, all of creation, the culmination with creating Adam, so that Adam could have fellowship with God. Because that's God's day of rest, man's first day on the planet. And if you don't have your own personal relationship with God, we would love to pray for you. Because God designed you for relationship and for connection with God. If you don't have your own personal relationship with God, hop on the phone right now. We want to pray with you and lead you in a prayer to begin your relationship with God. And in your mind, you might say, well, I'm not worthy, you know, and, and I've, I, I'm not adequate, I'm not smart. And, I, and, and we have these qualifications in our head but God doesn't have those qualifications. God is interested in connecting with you on a deep personal relationship. This is why he created Adam, why he created humanity. So hop on the phone. We want to pray with you, pray with you for you to have your own personal relationship with God. And when you do, grab your copy of Hey God, Can We Talk? Because this book, hugely helpful in your walk with God, in your relationship with God. Because in this book, I detail in lots of different chapters some of the key things that happen in our life. And, and how do we talk with God when these key things happen? So if life is in total meltdown, what, what's the conversation like with God? If you're at a fork in the road and you're like, I don't know, what does a conversation with God look like there? And here we read in Genesis chapters 2 and 3, what, what kind of conversation, what happens when we royally mess up? Because God had created this entire beautiful world, the whole universe, and the pin ultimate creation was Adam. And he tells Adam, he's like, dude, I'm so happy you're here. I've got this whole garden for you. I've got everything organized. You can eat all kinds of delicious food. And, and of any tree, of any whatever in the garden you can eat, of anything, just don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the only limit. That's the only boundary. That's the only thing that's a no-no, that's forbidden. I'm mean, like, seriously, God sets up this really plush, phenomenal experience, a lifestyle, existence for Adam. And the only one thing, don't eat from one tree. 
and there's, you know, animals around, so he's naming the animals, and he's got stuff in front of him. God creates Eve out of Adam's rib, you know, so Adam has a counterpart, a helper, a co-equal um, in this whole experience of, of humanity. But the one thing, don't eat. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's it. That's the only condition, the only limit, the only boundary. And yet, here we are, 4,000 years later, whatever it is, um, Adam and Eve, they ate. They ate the forbidden fruit. They did what they should not have done. And that relates to you, and that relates to me. I have done things that I should not have done. You have done things that you should not have done. And if we're not careful, there can be some really significant problems, <laughs> really significant problems, not just the natural consequences of, of something we've done that we shouldn't have done, but there can be some impact in your thinking, in your outlook, in your dialogue, in your conversations with God. There can be some very significant um, ripple effects to that one decision. And we see this with Adam and Eve. And I find it fascinating, in, in this whole experience with Adam and Eve, God sets them up in this beautiful, lush garden, wonderful conditions. Everything is perfect and pristine. It is, nothing is wrong. Nothing is, is flawed. There's no mishaps. There's no, like, little fatal flaw. There's none of that. And yet, with the one thing, Adam screws up. Adam screws up. And when we read the story, we understand, you know, the serpent... Snakes hate snakes. Serpent comes and talks to Eve, which I think is like hmm, a talking snake. Sna in my mind, snakes are bad to start with, and let alone a talking snake, that's a double no. I'm going to take a hard pass on that. I don't like that at all. And yet, <laughs> Eve is having this conversation, and the snake says to her, hey, did God really say? And he puts this seed of doubt, a question, an uncertainty, puts it in her mind, she thinks about it. She looks at the tree and like, ooh, that fruit looks good to eat. And as she's standing there and, and having the conversation with the serpent, and, and it says, if, when you read it in Hebrew, it says that Adam was standing next to her. Adam was with her when she started to consider this dialogue and the conversation with the snake. Adam is standing right there with her. And when they eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the forbidden fruit, Everything, <laughs> everything goes to like hell in a handbasket. And you might be watching right now and you might be living in all kinds of negative consequences from bad decisions that you've made. We would love to pray for you right now. Hop on the phone, get on the website. Do you wish your prayer time with God was more meaningful? Do you wish your time with Him was deeper and more intimate? For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Sarah's new book, Hey God, Can We Talk? This practical book is designed to transform your conversations with God. From distant and religious to genuine and authentic, deeply rooted in Scripture, this book helps you experience life-changing encounters with God through any circumstance, including when the future looks bleak, when your plans change, when your emotions are raw, and more. Regardless of your background, experiences, or training, the tools in this book will empower you to have deeper and more intimate conversations with God. We will also send you the new Conversation Starter Card. And for your gift of $40 or more, we will include Sarah's New Beginnings CD and Hope for the Future DVD. Jumpstart your talks with God. Call or click today for this transformational offer. Sarah Bowling, Living Genuine Love, is on a mission to connect every one with the heart of God. With a passion for the Bible and the gift of teaching, Sarah brings a new perspective to articulate God's life-giving revelation to our modern moment. God's heart relentlessly reaches all our hidden places and changes us from the inside out. And Living Genuine Love is equipping people with resources and tools that empower them to walk in this intimate relationship with God. Sarah is a powerful scholar and spirit-led teacher with a gift and passion that takes her many places around the world to bring lasting change to each of us who are craving the transformative love of God. At Living Genuine Love, we're committed to seeing you walk in a vibrant relationship with God every day. Learn more about Sarah Bowling and her ministry, Living Genuine Love, 
by visiting zarabowling.org or call us at 800-627-1995. So when we royally screw up, like Adam, like Eve, when they eat the forbidden fruit, now what? Now what? What, what do you say to God? And what does God say to you? And really, it's interesting to watch the behavior with Adam and Eve, because I, I think that is similar to what you and I might do, probably would do. Because you and I, we both screwed up. <laughs> we both screwed up and made bad decisions. And Adam and Eve, it was a bad decision. The, uh, the whole thing, why? Why would you why? Why would you ruin everything? And if you're like me, some of the things that roll around in my head is, you know, I should hide, I should be embarrassed, I should withdraw, I should, you know, do something and disappear. And that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. They disappeared. They hid themselves. And when we royally screw up, we mess up with God. It's interesting because I think that's the enemy's plan is to separate, to disconnect and to shame you and to berate you and tell you why you should absolutely hide and, and evaporate and, and don't, don't engage, don't connect, don't try to dialogue, just, just hunker down. That's what the enemy wants to do to you. And I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to grab your copy of Hey God, Can We Talk? Because in this book, it talks about conversations that we can and do have with God. What does that look like? And this particular conversation, when we royally screw up, that's one of the conversations. That's one of the chapters in this book. And super, super helpful. Because when we royally screw up, what's the dialogue like with God? In fact, what does God say? And it's interesting to me that when we read what God says... Adam messed up the one law. He broke it. The one rule, he broke it. And what does God say? I like God doesn't say, oh my gosh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I told you one thing and you blew it. What do you think? What were you thinking? Who, what on earth is ridiculous of all this? Stuff? We don't hear God say any of that. He could have said, you know, how could you be such a failure? I made such a great place for you. When did, how could you let this happen? Why would you... God doesn't talk about any of that, none of that. God doesn't shame, condemn. He already knows. God knows whew, <laughs> this is a really bad mess up. And I appreciate what happens here is because God goes and finds Adam. He finds him. Adam is hiding. Adam totally screwed up. Bad news. I mean, seriously, lost the plot, completely messed up. He's hiding. He's aware that he's naked now. He wasn't aware of that before. And now he's trying to cover up and, you know, like, you know, maybe blend in, to, like wearing like fig leaves and stuff. And, and God finds Adam. Adam, Adam, where are you? I love that question. Where are you? God's not saying, how could you have done that? What an idiot. How would you... Where are you? Where are you? And God is looking for you when you mess up. You don't need to hide. You don't need to run away. You don't need to unplug. You don't need to disconnect from God. God is saying, where are you? I want to know where you are because I want to talk with you. I want to have conversation. I want to have some interaction. I want to repair. I understand you totally screwed up. Where are you? Stop hiding. And we hide. How do we hide in modern America? Well, we hide by, we don't go to church. We, we cut off friendships. We, we stop reading our Bible. We, you know, unplug from, and, and we hide. We try to shame and disconnect because we're not worthy. And the reality is we never have been worthy except for what Jesus did. Jesus made it possible. Jesus reconciles us. So God's not saying what what an idiot <laughs> how could you do that here's the one thing how, why would you ever think he's saying where are you where where are you i want to have some conversation with you i want to come back into fellowship back into connection and really when you think about it this is a major major conversation because you and i we have screwed up with god we have we have messed up 
we've failed in, in things that God has told us to do. We've made mistakes and stuff that God said, don't do that, and we did. And, and God does not absolutely, he does not say, you know, ostracize you and exclude you and, and really shame and put all this guilt, all that stuff. That's the enemy. Because the enemy of your soul wants to unplug you and disconnect you from God. So I want to encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of, Hey God, Can We Talk? And if you know individuals who have walked away from God or they made such horrific mistakes, you know, maybe they messed up their marriage, maybe they messed up their kids, make sure you grab a copy of, Hey God, Can We Talk? And pass this on to your friends, to your family. Because there's not a human on the planet that hasn't royally screwed up. And I appreciate that when God finds Adam, where are you? And Adam says to him, well, I was hiding. Why were you hiding? Well, I ate the forbidden fruit, God. And why would you do that? Well, the woman, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's classic human reply, right? I mean, let's blame somebody else. Not my fault, it's her fault. Uh, and then for her, it's not my fault, it's the snake's fault. You made the snake, so it's got to be your fault, God. I mean, we, <laughs> that is so quintessential human. But I appreciate that, that blaming, it doesn't necessarily resolve or reconcile but when we sit with God and have an honest dialogue, where are you? I'm here with you, God. And I totally screwed up. And I'm really, really sorry. And I want you to appreciate that God, and it tells us this in 1 John, that God is love. Love is looking for you. Love is looking past your mistakes. Love is looking past your failures past your shortcomings. Love is looking for you and not with condemnation, accusation and, and hate and shame and, and, and eviction or whatever exclusion. Love is looking for you to reconnect and to reconcile. And maybe today you need to begin a brand new walk with God. Maybe you need to have a do-over. In golf, they call it a mulligan. And if you need a do-over with God, you're like, yeah, I need a fresh start. This is why, why God sent Jesus out of genuine love for you to reconcile. And we would love to pray for you to have a brand new beginning with Jesus. Why don't you hop on the phone? Let us pray with you to begin and start over in your own personal walk with God, regardless of what you've done or you haven't done that you can have a brand new beginning, a fresh start with God. And I see this with Adam. I see God reaching past Adam's shortfalls, past Adam's failures. God reaching into his heart, reaching into the relationship with Eve and reconnecting them and saying, look, I can cover you. I can forgive you. I can create a, a sacrifice to cover the sin, cover your failure. And it's never God's heart. And God made a promise God made a promise in the midst of their horrible failure. God made a promise about Jesus. Jesus coming to do the ultimate sacrifice and reconcile humanity to God. So I want to encourage you today that God is all about you. Love is looking for you. And you don't need to hide and sometimes we hide and, you know, stop going to church. Sometimes we hide in our achievements. We try to overachieve to compensate. Sometimes we hide maybe in, in something addictive, an addictive problem, an issue. Sometimes we hide and we just kind of withdraw into entertainment or maybe we do the gaming thing. We hide in all kinds of ways, but love is looking for you. And it's time to stop hiding, come into the light and have some conversation, dialogue, interaction, connection with God, because love is looking for you. And I just want to strongly encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of Hey God, Can We Talk? In this book, as you read through the, each and every chapter, you will see some conversations, dialogues with God that relate to your daily living. And at the end of every chapter, I have something called a conversation starter. Oh my goodness. These are such helpful resources for you to have your own conversations, ongoing conversations, dialogues 
with God, no matter what you're walking through in your life. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple of copies of Hey God, Can We Talk? This will be an immense resource to help you develop and deepen your conversations with God in your daily living so you can experience genuine love every day. Do you wish your prayer time with God was more meaningful? Do you wish your time with Him was deeper and more intimate? For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Sarah's new book, Hey God, Can We Talk? This practical book is designed to transform your conversations with God. From distant and religious to genuine and authentic, deeply rooted in Scripture, this book helps you experience life-changing encounters with God through any circumstance, including when the future looks bleak, when your plans change, when your emotions are raw, and more. Regardless of your background, experiences, or training, the tools in this book will empower you to have deeper and more intimate conversations with God. We will also send you the new Conversation Starter Card. And for your gift of $40 or more, we will include Sarah's New Beginnings CD and Hope for the Future DVD. Jumpstart your talks with God. Call or click today for this transformational offer. I want to thank you so much for watching, for watching this time and, and thinking about the conversations and dialogues that you can have with God. And of course, grab your copy of Hey God, Can We Talk? Huge resource, massively helpful for these conversations because it can be difficult. It can be really difficult to have some conversations with God, conversations when maybe you screwed up or conversations when you're frustrated with God and you feel like there's it's unresolved issues and you're just struggling. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you would have some honest dialogue, conversations with God and that your conversations with God, maybe it's not just a quick 20 second discussion, but maybe it's a conversation over, over some extended time and there's some back and forth and some really honest dialogue conversation. So I want to pray for you now that you would have and you would walk into these conversations no matter how difficult they are. So Father, I pray for each person watching right now. I pray for myself included that you would help us to talk with you on these issues, things where we've screwed up, on these issues where we have uncertainty, unresolved issues, questions in our lives. I pray that you would help us to talk honestly and that you would help us to hear you. We would recognize your voice. I pray for each person watching that they are your sheep and the voice of a stranger they don't follow. So thank you for helping us to talk with you and to hear you well and have an amazing conversation for deeper relationship with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that God loves you deeply. Mm -hmm.